Ready? Let's say it. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. I kind of, that, that, that's kind of sad for me because I love the ocean. Um, and uh, I know there's a reason for it. God's going to have lots of ri So we're going to have rivers. Hopefully we'll have some lakes. Amen. Um, but we're not going to have the ocean as we know it. Okay. Um, but um, we'll see. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, people have talked about the dinosaurs, right? How many are interested in dinosaurs, huh? Okay, one of the, Bob, one of the things that was really unusual at the Ark, okay, in Kentucky, we were there a month ago, and as you go through this thing, they actually think that dinosaurs were on there, I think. Some of them, not all of them, but that was very strange to me. But I guess that's true. The dinosaurs were wiped out in the flood, right? It comes from the yes, yes, Bert. They recovered out of Siberia. Right. I need a water, honey. What's that? Right. And these mammoths were complete. And right. They went into them and found undigested food in their stomach. Right. Yeah, amazing. Well, or that they drown. <laughs> yeah. In, in order for them to grow those in their fast, the temperature would have to be 300 degrees below zero. Right. Right. Incredible. Well, how about all the fossils too? You know, the fossil, the fossils. If you go up to the Grand Canyon, you know, you you'll see these fossil records, and, and it's like the the animals were literally pressed into the rock, right? Okay, and yeah, I, okay, we're gonna have a big water run here. Oh my, yeah, hmm. Leviathan is like a large whale. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. I don't know how I got into that, <clears throat> but I did. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. What? What did he say, Bob? <laughs> Call them lizards. Call them lizards. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what? I'm not. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to go. I'm, how do we get into that? You, you got me into this. All you, all you. I, I know you did it. No, it can't be my fault. No. <laughs> New heavens and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth would pass away. There was no more sea. Oh, yeah, the sea. We were talking about the sea. That's what it was. Because I'm a surfer. I'm an old surfer. Okay? We made our own surfboards, you know, and there's going to be no more sea. So, But we know there's going to be rivers, or at least a river, right? And I'm a, it didn't say there's not going to be lakes. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be lakes, okay? All right. That's what it is. Okay. So memorize that verse. So, see, all of what we, our existence is all temporal here. Everything you see um, is temporal. All of this, piano, pulpit, baptistry, chairs, building, all of this is going to be gone. Going to be gone. Second Timothy or Second Peter tells us the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Okay. Now let me say this, and I don't want to get I don't want to get into another long discussion. Okay, but I believe there's going to be a renovation, a partial type renovation. I think in the first part of Second Peter, 
okay, that prepares the world for the millennium. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Um, we know in the millennium the curse will be lifted, right? Okay. The rattlesnakes are not going to bite us around here. The scorpions aren't going to sting us. Won't that be great? Yeah. Be, be fantastic. Yeah, we ha we have lions for pets. That's right. Instead of princess, we're going to have Leo. Mm -hmm. What's that, Bert? That's right. The deserts will bloom. We're not going to have all these thorns. Amen. Uh, all these these cactuses will will not bite us and stick us. Um, so there's going to be something going on there. Okay, but then at the, that that's a millennium, right? That's a thousand years. That's a long time. A thousand years. So you and I are going to be here with Christ in our glorified bodies for a thousand years. All right. Now, at the end of that thousand years, we already just talked about it. Okay. We're going to have one final battle. Of course, Satan is going to be uh, locked up for a thousand years, and then he's going to be let out for a season. Okay. So. What's that? Three months? Four months? Who knows? All right? A little season, right. A shortened season. Yeah. And you know what's amazing about that is that, they, that, that people won't be able to blame the environment, right? There's going to be amazing medical treatment at that time. There will be healing that will take place. Um, uh, a totally different uh, perspective in the millennium. There will be healing taking place. There will be uh, peace. He will rule and reign with a rod of iron. There will be no wars. None. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Millions of those people who are born and live in the millennium. We're going to have extended lifespans, right? Well, you and I, we're going to be in our glorified bodies, so we'll be in the eternal, as far as our, that's concerned. Um, so, uh, it, it, it's just a fascinating time on the earth. But really, it's just a foretaste of what's going to be happening. Okay? Because at the end, and this is what I, this is the point I wanted to make, is it says here, <clears throat> the devil, uh, uh, excuse me, um, <clears throat> okay, verse 7 of chapter 20. Chapter 20 and verse 7, what does it say? Somebody read it. Mmm. He's going to be loosed out of his prison. And what? Verse 8, everyone. And shall go out <coughs> to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That's hyperbole. Okay. All right. We went upon the breadth of the earth, compassed the camp of the saints, the beloved city. So once again... <laughs> I read something <clears throat> yesterday. Somebody sent me something that Iran is planning a multi-pronged attack on Israel. <clears throat> now think of that. The coming war with Russia, the first, as what we would call the first Gog and Magog, is very close. Hmm. Very close. And the difference is, the first Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39, the nations are all listed there, right? They're all listed. Russia, we got the kings of the east, of course, they're mentioned in, in Revelation. Uh, make way, you know, Tigris, Euphrates rivers will drive up to make way for the kings of the east, and so forth. And they all want to destroy Israel. <clears throat> All right. So here comes Satan. 
and he's going to let them out at the end of the millennium, this incredible time of a thousand years of rain. And here's the amazing thing. A lot of the people, listen closely now, a lot of the people who say, I love Jesus. A lot of people who say, I've received Christ as my Savior, will be found out to be fakes. Mm -mm. Millions of them. They're just going along. You know, you know the little statement, going along to get along? <laughs> so they outwardly will be obedient. Because if they're outwardly rebellious, they will pro they will be killed probably. Jesus is not going to have a, 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 much patience with outri outright rebellion. There's not going to be outright rebellion. So think of it. So this is the final test of man. You have a perfect environment, a perfect uh, government. A perfect ruler. You have the curse lifted. I mean, earth as good as you can get it. With sin still around. Satan's gone. The beast and the false prophet are gone. And man still fails. That's what's happening. The final test of man. And what happens? Mm -hmm. Verse 9, they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints in the beloved city, and fire came down out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. We mentioned this, uh, I don't know if it was last Sunday or Sunday before, hell is a temporary place. Hell is a place where unsaved people immediately go. So when somebody dies in sin, they go to hell. That's where they go. Where is hell, Bob? Mm -hmm. Hell is in the center of the earth. Or it's in the earth. Okay. So we saw a great white throne judgment then. We talked about that, right? I saw the dead small and great. So the wicked presidents and um, senators, representatives, governors, all of those who are lost, the millionaires and the billionaires, those who are lost, will stand before God. Their money will not get them out of that appointment with God. They were judged out of those things which are written in the books. We talked about the books, right? The different books that God has. I think we gave you a copy of that. Uh, we have the book of life, the book of man's works. We have the Lamb's book of life. We have the book of the law, so forth. The book of remembrance. God has a library, okay? God has a library. And... It's the most important library in the world. Okay? So now, whosoever, let's read it together. Uh, the sea gave up the dead which were in them, verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now, we're, here we are. We're, we're moving now into the eternal state. Hell's going to be gone. Death's going to be gone. In verse 15, says what, everyone? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. No one. You, you don't want anybody to go there. Okay. Now let me, let's jump, jump just across the page for a moment. Revelation 21.8. Revelation 21.8. Put that up there. And I want to I wanna just mention something about this verse that I think a lot of Christians have 
a struggle with. Because this verse goes along with 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 15. Let's read it together. Uh, 21, 8, everyone. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, this, which is the second death. So as we go into this eternal state, God's separating, right, the sheep from the goats, if, so to speak. When the Titanic went down, it didn't matter how much money people had. There was only two people saved and one lost. Saved and lost. And that's where we are. There's no more preaching of the gospel. That's done. No more preaching of the gospel. We're moving into the eternal state. Your doom is sealed. Your destination is sealed at that time, by that time. Okay? No second chance. If you read of a second chance in the Bible after death, let me know. I really like, you know. The, the, one of the commentators... A good and godly man, he uh, he started uh, writing about, yeah, there's a second chance for these people. I don't see it anywhere in the Bible. It's just nowhere to be found. I'm sorry. When you're there at the great white throne judgment, your doom is, you're judged according to your works as to where you're going to be in the lake of fire. That's what that's about. The judgment seat of Christ, okay, that's for us during the tribulation. That determines where we will be in heaven. I read Jonathan Edwards today, Bob. i got to get you guys that that devotional, day, day by day with, with Jonathan Edwards. He talked about the mansions. Beloved, you know, and, and all of us have seen these shows, right, with, with the... Uh, the great houses and mansions of the wealthy, right? And, you know, they got, you know, who's that? I don't know who that actor is. What's his name? The big big shot actor who has a, he has a plane. That That's how he gets around. What's his name? The guy? Yes, Travolta. Yeah, yeah. He's So he's a pilot and he's got his own. You know what? That's not going to help him. You know, what are you going to tell him before Jesus? Well, Jesus, I have a plane. <laughs> that won't that plane won't get you out of hell. Yeah. That's the, That's the best man can do. Yeah. All of them are going to stand before God. Right? And uh it's 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 settled, beloved. It's settled. What I want to say is all of these incredible mansions that that, are, that people have whether it's Elon Musk or, or Bill Gates or any of these and their great yachts they have and all of those things. I'm going to tell you something. They're nothing to be compared with the mansions that you and I are going to have in heaven. <laughs> wow. <laughs> mansions in heaven in glory. And... Uh, <clears throat> Wow. Who's going to be closest? Let me, let me uh, this is, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vernon McGee. Vernon McGee. This is what he says. Adopting a popular aphorism of the day, it can truly be said that this chapter of 21, excuse me, is out of this world. As the long vista of eternity is before us in this chapter. We have moved not only from time to eternity, but into a new creation, a new heaven and a new earth, and a new Jerusalem greet us. The redeemed have previously received their glorified bodies, like Christ, 
All things have become. Our God is the God of the new. Did you know that? When I got saved, I became a what? A new creature. Amen. New desires. New purpose. New destination. New goals. Everything is new. All that old junk that I used to like, just it's gone, man. I, my, my love for it is gone. And this is the problem I have with some Christians is they still love the world. They still want, they're like a lot, right? They want to look back. They, they still, oh, I still had a, I had such a good time, you know, in sin. Don't yearn and, and paying for, for sin, you know, in the sinful state. Look, look what we got ahead of us, beloved. New heavens, new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> Incredible. And God's going to burn all this up. So look at your notes for a moment, if you would. At, up to this point, the book of Revelation has explained the church age, right? The rapture. God's people said, amen. Any moment. The tribulation period. What a time of judgment for this world. I was reading Zephaniah today speaks about the tribulation in Zephaniah. The coming, the second coming of Christ. In other words, our coming back with him at Armageddon. The battle of Armageddon. Of course, now wait, before that, you know, we got the, the judgment seat of Christ, right? We got the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? That's going to be incredible. And after we're done with the marriage, marriage, you know, obviously there's going to be some kind of, now think about this, there's going to be some kind of heavenly uh, wedding. The Lord doesn't talk much about it, does he? He talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride hath made herself ready. That's you and me. Now, where did we make ourselves ready? We made ourselves ready in 1 Corinthians 3, at the judgment seat of Christ. Whatever, ne whatever we neglected, whatever we did and we stumbled and fell as a Christian, that's all going to be dealt with there. And it's going to be gone under the blood as we move into that, that uh, eternal state, as we, as we move into the uh, uh, battle of army. And somewhere in there, after the supper, he's going to rise us up and the Lord Jesus, now think of it, the Lord Jesus is going to look at all of us, all the millions. He's going to say, my dear, precious, beloved, my brides, my bride, I have a beautiful white stallion out the door for you. Your name is on that stallion. White horse. We're going back to the earth to take care of some business. <laughs> Amen. Armageddon. We're going to take care of the devil, the beast and the false prophet, and the devil. And from there, then we're going to move into that millennial period, right? Praise God. It's going to be a glorious time. And from there, then we're going to have the battle of Gog and Magog, great white throne judgment. Now we are at new heavens and a new earth. That's where we are. Okay? So take a look. Um, so the last, uh, uh, excuse me, the battle of Gog and Magog and the great white throne judgment. We're still in this first paragraph. Got it? So in that first paragraph, we're, we're transitioning now. We're transitioning from the temporal to the eternal. Wow. You and I are going to be a part of it. There are seven new things now as we move down into the second paragraph. There are new heaven and a new earth. The new city. Now, I want you to see this. Verse 2, let's read verse 2. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Verse 2, everybody. 
And I, John, everybody, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Amen. Now, well, the New Jerusalem is a term for heaven, okay? It is a term for that 1500 mile cube the four the the, the the four square city of God now think about that 1500 mile cube is a massive massive area now but think about it this new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven it's making it's, it's pretty clear that's not all heaven is but it's 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 the uh, it's coming out of heaven, and it says a bride adorned. And so I'm going to talk more about this, all right? And where every where 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 are we going to be living? I I believe that we're going to be traveling between the New Jerusalem and Earth. I think we'll be doing that. Now God doesn't talk a lot about it, <laughs> but we're going to have glorified bodies. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, verse 3, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. I want you to see verse 4. Now, this is very important, what we read in verse 4. Everyone, let's read it. And God, let's read it real slow. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. God will take at that point his heavenly handkerchief, okay, and he will wipe away those tears from your eyes. Now, if the Lord is doing that at this point, I want to ask you a question. Are there tears in the millennium? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be thinking about some people. Well, I mean, what tears are there going to be to wipe away if if we're not if we're not weeping? See, so we talk about this that God's going to wipe away our tears, but there's going to be some time factor where I think there's going to be tears in heaven. But at this point, the Lord's saying, "Okay, we're going into a new time, new heavens, new earth. No more tears." Amen. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering. So I'm just saying uh, the millennium is not perfect. It's close to it. A lot of wonderful things. But when we get into this point, at this point, new there's new heaven and a new earth. At this point, Everything changes. No more tears. No more sorrow. Yes, it's too bad that someone we loved made the choice not to receive Christ. Right? But we're not going to be in heaven weeping and crying and moaning and groaning. God's going to weep. He's going to look at us and he's going to say, they made their choice. You made your choice. You came with me. They chose not to come with us. I have a place for them. I guess the only comfort we can have is that God judges them according to their works. Some will burn in hell less than others. Boy, not much comfort there. Not much comfort. 
I'm just giving you what the Bible says. Okay? So the first heaven and the first earth is passed away. You see this? So here's the new Jerusalem descending out, 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 of, out of heaven. First heaven, first earth passed away. There are three heavens. Atmospheric heaven includes the sky and the birds. And we, uh, then we have the celestial heavens where the planets and solar system are and the believer's heaven where God's throne is. This new heaven in this passage refers to the atmospheric heaven where man lives, breathes, and sees. Okay, God dwells with them. Former things are passed away. Praise God at this point. No more death, no more sorrow. We're going into a new heaven, new earth. It's totally different. This, okay, beloved, this is an incredible step up from the millennium. We, we're thinking about the millennium, how it's going to be great. Amen? No curse. We're going to have glorified bodies. On and on and on and on. But this is a step, a, a huge step up from that. This is going to be perfection. No more night. Jesus is going to, yeah, be the light. And here's a statement here. Uh, no, verse 5, everyone. Verse 5, quickly. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Here it is. Verse 6, come on everybody. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life, freely. Hmm. What did Jesus say on the cross, his final words? It is finished. Is done. Now for creation, new heavens and a new earth, he said it is done. What's done? Take a look at your notes. For the overcomers, every born again believer is an overcomer. Amen? Read John chapter 16, 20, 32 and 33. In this world, you shall have tribulation, small t. But what? Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We have overcome through Christ. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So it is done for the unbelie for the believers, and it's done for the unbelievers. Back page on the back, Revelation 20. It is done for unbelievers. They will be punished in the lake of fire and will be forever with the devil and his angels. And that's what the Bible says. All right, we're going to stop there. Any question on any of that? He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. He shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Fearful and unbelieving, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and what? All liars shall have their part in the lake which burns them. Now listen to me, okay? <clears throat> have you ever lied since you've been saved? Pretty much all of us have, in one way or another. <clears throat> Are you a liar? No. You're a Christian who lies every once in a while. Hopefully you don't make a habit of it. And you confess it, right? Yeah. All liars mean people who, who obviously believe the lie of the devil, all right? All liars. In other words, the person who lives a lie shall have their part in the lake. Uh, people who are lost, they're living a lie. They think, oh, it's going to turn out okay. You and I, if you're a child of God, you are not a liar.
You're a child of God who may lie, but you confess that lying, don't you? And hopefully you go to the person you lied to and you ask him to forgive you. So I, 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 I want to say this. It's, it's a serious thing to lie. It is. So there's one thing I won't do for people. I'm not going to lie for them. I tell them that. I have people all the time ask me to lie for them. I'm not going to lie for you. Okay? I'll do my best to help you in any way I can. But don't ask me to lie for you. That's a serious thing, right? All right. Let's go to prayer. And uh, maybe we'll just pray here. And uh, let's just pray together. It's, it, it takes too long to separate out and everything. But I would like to have some prayer time here. 16, 32, and 33. John 16, 32, and 33. Read it for us. Yeah, go ahead and read it. First person that gets there. Go ahead. Want me to read it for you? It's John 16, 32 and 33. Two of my favorite verses in all the Bible. Go ahead. Unto you. Louder. Amen. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. All right, let's go to prayer tonight. Maybe you have somebody that we need to pray for. For a week. By the way, we, we had a good crowd Sunday. Um, good spirit. Praise the Lord. Uh, we had five visitors. Uh, let's pray for Joseph. Let's pray for... Uh, uh, oh, what's his name? Luis. Okay, he's going through a lot. Jen, next door here. Jen, she lives over by you, Ava. And Stephanie, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And Gavi. Pray for Gavi. Pray for them boys. Dick Cather was here. Sunday morning and Sunday night. Dick was here in the dark. He said, uh, Nori's not going to be here? I'm coming. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> he was here and he had joy. He, he dealt, you know what he did? He dealt with that, that little boy, Gabby. And he dealt with him on assurance and he gave him his Bible. Yes. Dick was just like in, in heaven after that. He was so joyful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So pray for Gavi. Just put G A V I, Gavi. And uh, who's the other boy? St Santino, right? Santino. And Susanna. I want to see Susanna. All right. Gavi, G A V I. Jen, Luis. You know Luis. He joined while we were <laughs> while we were in California. That's the first time in my ministry I've ever had somebody join and ever met him. All right. I said, Brother Matt, I trust you. And he's you know, he's been coming. But boy, does he have a troubled past. Jen and Stephanie and Dick. All right, let's pray. Let's go to prayer tonight. I'll open. And we'll just take a few of you. And uh, then I'll close, okay? Yes. Father in heaven, we bow before you. We thank you for the opportunity to come to your throne. Now, Lord, we got a special Sunday coming up. <clears throat> we need you in the, we need your presence. We need you in the preparation. We thank you for Dr. Lee, just a humble, precious man of God going to, I don't know if it's Seoul or uh, what part of South Korea. What a very, very special land 
in great need right now with all of the threats from the north. When you, whatever his name is, Sung Young Kim Il Kim Il Sung or whatever his name is, whose grandparents were a part of the great revival that took place in Pyongyang many years ago. Lord, I pray that you'll fill the house. Fill the house with as, as many people we can get in here. And then fill it with your glory. I thank you for these precious boys who came to Christ. I pray for Santoni and Gabby. And I pray for Jen and Stephanie. I pray for Dick Cather. Oh, God, put a hedge around him. Um, thank you for Becca and her desire to bring others. Luis, Lord, you know about all about his troubled past. But we ask you, Father, to just sustain him, uphold him. Noreen, I pray for Noreen, her knees, her thumb, whatever else is bothering her, for Debbie here. We missed him both Sunday. I pray your blessing on him. I pray for Diana here, Lord, and her precious son, the needs that he has. Brother Bert, Lord, and what he goes through on a daily basis that really the rest of us don't go through. <laughs> he suffers like nobody in this church, and yet he rejoices and he praises you. We pray for little Mikey, Lord, who had a, uh, yeah, put him down, please, Mikey. Uh, who had a seizure yesterday. Little baby boy had a seizure yesterday. He, he didn't have a good day. I don't know how it is today. I wasn't able to talk to him. So I pray for little Mikey. Raise him up. I pray for Joe Lanius, Lord, who was in court today, and I was in court with him for quite a while today. We, Lord, we just pray that things will come out okay for him. Have mercy on him, Lord. What it, we just don't understand. We pray for Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden and the whole this whole political civil war that's going on in this country. Father God, have mercy on our nation. Please. Put the most godly people in office. That's our desire. Independent, whatever. Democrat, Republican, uh, vegetarian, whatever. Lord, you, God in heaven, just have mercy on us. These ungodly people pushing for more abortion, more murder in the womb. We, Lord, they want to follow the science when it buttresses their argument, but science tells us that is a life in the womb. That's a life in there that can feel and hear and touch. Oh, God in heaven. I pray for the helpless unborn that are in the wombs of women all over this world right now, that you'll give them a chance to live. Let me live. Thank you that my mother didn't have an abortion. Thank you that our mothers chose life. And there's people in this room that they don't have good they don't have good memories of their mother. How sad. I think of uh, the vice presidential candidate. He didn't have uh, Vance. His mother was a drug addict or whatever. God had mercy on him. He was raised by his grandmother and his grand grandfather. Christian people. Father, have mercy on us. We pray. Send revival. Send it this Sunday. Bless the soul winning effort. Bless the service. Bless the meal. We pray for Matt and Edie, Lord, as she goes through Cardiac Valley, Lord. She may not be with us much longer. We just pray for them, that you'll raise her up in such a mighty way 
that they'll be able to come back. Thy will be done. Touch her. Touch her is our prayer. Heal her. Bless those who pray in Jesus' name.